On this week's episode of Inside Outside Innovation, we sit down with New York Times bestselling author and founder of Moves the Needle, Brant Cooper. Brant and I talk about his upcoming book, Disruption Proof, and provide a sneak peek into our upcoming IO Live event on September 29th. Let's get started. Inside Outside Innovation is the podcast to help you rethink, reset, and remix yourself and your organization. Each week, we'll bring the latest innovators, entrepreneurs, and pioneering businesses, as well as the tools, tactics, and trends you'll need to thrive as a new innovator. Welcome to another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. I'm your host, Brian Ardinger. And as always, we have another amazing guest. Today, we have Brant Cooper. He's the founder of Moves the Needle, New York Times bestselling author of The Lean Entrepreneur and author of an upcoming book, which I'm so excited to talk about, called Disruption Proof, Empower People, Create Value, and Drive Change. Welcome, Brant. Thanks, Brian. Pleasure as always. I'm excited to have you back. As our audience knows, you've been part of the lean scene for a long time. You had a chance to speak at our IO 2020 summit. And we're going to do a little something different with this podcast episode because we're having you back on September 29th for a live event. It's part of our IO Live series. Basically, we're going to have an hour to talk about the book and have audience questions and, and do a little bit more in-depth stuff with you. So I wanted to save this episode more as a preview to get folks excited about the book and excited about some of the things we're going to be talking about. So with that, you've got a new book out called Disruption Proof. Tell us how you got to the point of writing a new book and what's it all about. Yeah, so I guess it's been in the works for a couple of years, actually. It seems like so pandemic ready, but that was maybe <laughs> just fortuitous that I was already embarking on it. And then, of course, the pandemic itself hit and business kind of dried up. So that gave me the opportunity to really crank <laughs> it out. It you know, over the last seven, eight years, taking some of that lean stuff into the large enterprise. And it's just, that was an interesting journey in the sense that, you know, all of this lean startup, lean innovation stuff really started in Silicon Valley startups. I mean, honestly, it preceded all of that, but, you know, us tech startup people like to feel like we've invented everything. <laughs> there was a movement, right? And so starting in, in startups, and then we bring it into the big companies, and inevitably, we start with the innovation groups. As I'm trying to work through the change that is required inside of these companies, I really realize that there's uncertainty everywhere inside the enterprise. There's something happening here way bigger. And this is you know, perhaps obvious to a lot more people. It takes me a while. I think really this fundamental shift from the industrial age and management practices and even management organization that's based around the industrial age, really this level of complexity and endless disruption that is in the digital age leads to this uncertainty. And we continue to try to tackle the uncertainty the way we did in the industrial age. And it just creates more angst and it creates more doubt and people just really wondering what the heck is going on. Then the pandemic hits. And I think we blame all of that angst and anxiety on the pandemic. And now people are like, ah, oh, man, I can't wait to get back to the old normal. And right. yet the old normal was still filled with that uncertainty. And so that's really what the book ended up addressing. So again, I didn't start out with writing, you know, sort of this post pandemic book, but because I was writing it right in the middle of all of this, there really ends up being these pandemic and how do you respond to it? And, and what does this mean in that bigger picture that ends up being what the book is about? It's interesting because I think, you know, I've been talking about disruption forever and innovation groups have been talking about it and trying to figure out how to do this. And the pandemic really seems to have taken that theory and made it real for most people. I mean, everybody on the planet, to some extent, has been disrupted by various means of, of what happened during the last 18 months or so. And it really, I think, has brought out the conversation where it's no longer theory we're talking about. It's like, yeah, I get it, but now I really get it, but I still don't know what to do about it. So, you know, I've seen the proof of your book in that you really capture and talk about the five elements of what you need to be doing to embrace this new world of work. So maybe talk through a little bit about that and some of the things that you found out. Yeah. So to me, the key is to all of this is that it's not really the technology, even though we're in a digital revolution and we're doing digital transformation 
and we're working in innovation, it just really isn't about the technology because there's not that much uncertainty around the technology. It's really about the mindset and the way we have to change our thinking and our behavior relative to this massive change in technology. And so I describe the behavior change that we need based upon these five elements. And so empathy, exploration, which is basically admitting what we don't know. And so going out and learning, leveraging evidence. So data plus insights to help us inform decisions. We don't want just algorithms and AI deciding for us, but certainly what we go and figure out needs to inform our decisions. This concept of equilibrium, which is building a balance between the execution, everything that we know we have to get done and this exploration work, meaning that we have to go and learn something first. That's a continuum throughout the organization. Even your core business needs to do some amount of exploration. It's not this bifurcation of one side of the house is execution and one side is exploration. I think that that's industrial age innovation thinking. Yeah. And then the final one is ethics. And with all of the data problems that we have and with livable wages and all of these other things that have really come to the fore, it's really incumbent upon businesses to figure out how they live up to their own values that they establish and that they broadcast. And again, that ends up being something that we have to drive down into the human behavior. And so rather than some of the big management theories on how you do change, which is very top down, I mm -hmm. wanted to describe the behaviors of what people actually have to do day in, day out inside of their jobs. And it really is a ground up initiative. It requires obviously leaders to buy in and go, yes, we're going to change. It's kind of a pincer move, but you have to start with developing that behavior on the ground. And I guess the one other point I would make about it is the reason why I'm somewhat optimistic about that is this behavior already exists, right? The people that are subscribing to your podcast and that read your stuff, Brian, design thinkers and agile people and lean startup people and entrepreneurs, people that are doing side gigs, these are people that already have this mindset. And so what we have to take is not put them all in this silo, but rather get them right. to be the leaders of tomorrow, bringing this diverse mindset, this exploration skill set to the rest of the business. All the stuff you talked about is just so messy. And I think everybody's still looking for that silver bullet. Like if you do this, this, and this, follow this particular path, you will have success. And Lean Startup was never meant to be the perfect path. Even if you follow Lean Startup 100%, you're still not guaranteed a successful product, service, whatever you're trying to create. Right. It's that journey. You have to put on those exploration hats or backpack or whatever. I talk about going into a cave. The only way you can get out of the cave is you got to stumble around and figure it out. And the challenge is we don't reward that stumbling around. <laughs> we don't provide the tool sets or the skill sets for folks that are not inherently like the entrepreneur that kind of has it built into their, their ecosystem. So what can an average Joe hearing about this, understanding theoretically that they need to do this, are there tactics or things that you've seen that help start building that muscle? There's a couple of things in there that come to mind. Number one is go find the like-minded people. Go find the people mm. that maybe already exist inside of every big yeah. business. So go find them. And it could be just doing an innovation mindset happy hour once a week or every other week. But it's something that you want to try to spread throughout the organization because these are your early adopters. And what you find is that there are leaders that actually belong to that group. And suddenly maybe yeah. you have these areas where you can start running experiments, even with budget or even with permission. But so number one is finding like-minded people. Number two is to not wait for permission, to go and run experiments and come up with data. And then when you actually are seeking permission or advice or input, you're actually bringing evidence to the table and not just ideas. And I really do believe that ideas are dime a dozen. Every big organization I've worked with has no problem with ideas. And I think leadership and middle management and all the rest go, yeah, we really need to empower the ideas of people. It's just not taking it far enough. If you've got thousands mm -hmm. of ideas, literally, it's how do you choose those ideas? The people on the ground need to themselves not just go ask for stuff. They need to be able to provide evidence for what they're asking yeah. for. And I think that that added layer is actually going to start changing the conversation. 
And then the third thing that I really encourage people to do is to try to go and get empathy for their leadership. And so it, it's kind of a funny concept because we often in that hierarchical command and control structure are either afraid to do that or don't think that we're even allowed to do that. And it doesn't mean that we are to whatever the whims are of the leaders. There's a selfish aspect of developing empathy in the sense that the more I understand my bosses, the more I understand how I'm going to get what I think that I need, right? So you're right. learning just as if they were a customer, you're learning how to navigate your relationship with the leader in order to get what you think is the right thing for yourself, your team, and your company. Yeah. And oftentimes it is a balance. You still have to hit those quarterly numbers and still do what you're designed to execute on and optimize, but knowing full well that if you do that and only that, you're not going to get to where you need to be or not create the next future, whatever ends up on that front. Again, we can go and talk for hours and we're going to do that here in the coming months. So I encourage people to go to insideoutside.io. We'll have information posted there about signing up for the IO Live event we're here with Brant Cooper. And in the interim, if people want to get a little sneak preview, find out more about yourself, more about the book, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so I'm Brant at BrantCooper.com, Brant Cooper on all the social media, and I really encourage people to reach out. I respond to everyone. The website is BrantCooper.com right now, and people can pre-order the book as well as get some other goodies, and we'll be sharing uh, content from the book in the coming months as we prepare to join you on your show. Reach out, say hello, and join the conversation, really. I think that one of the things that you said, Brian, is that there isn't a formula. I mean, there's actually not one way out of that cave. And that's what complexity is, right? Is that there's no best practices. And so right. all of these different variables that people face based upon their businesses and based upon the history and based upon the people that are inside that business, everybody's going to have to figure out their way out of the cave. But there are some fundamentals. And also what we want to do is try to create community around what works. We can share what works and what doesn't work and those type of things. So all of these people can start figuring it out what works in their organization. Excellent. Well, Brant, I'm excited for this conversation. Thanks for being a part of it. I look forward to having, again, a more in-depth conversation with the audience and encourage people to come out for that, participate in that. And we look forward to talking in about a month or so. Thanks again for coming on. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Great to catch up, man. That's it for another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. If you want to learn more about our team, our content, our services, check out insideoutside.io or follow us on Twitter at the IO Podcast or at Artinger. Until next time, go out and innovate.